Hello, Sim Gamers. Welcome back to another episode of Let's Play Sailwind. This time we're doing the hard start, which happens over in Astrin, and the ship we start off with is the Cog. It's quite a difficult ship to handle until you get used to it. Um, Astrin is a temperate region with moderate rainfall and infrequent storms. Sailing here can be challenging due to unpredictable winds. Those storms are uncommon. So this hard start cog, um, we start off with our basic gear. We don't start off with a lot of food. We start off with literally a piece of cheese and that's it. <clears throat> so for our first journey, we actually need to spend some money on some supplies. We don't have much to sell, right? So let's go ahead and get my equipment stowed away where I want it as far as the main, you know, main three things. And then uh, let's see about buying some additional food so we don't starve on the way. Just gonna put this cheese down. I'll get some more cheese. Just want to make sure that I have a decent amount of food to start off with until we get our first mission or two under our belt and we can afford more, more stuff. So let's see what we got. Sweet. Just an easy ship, uh, shipping thing from where we are, Siren Song, to Fort Astron, which is the capital city of this area. So we'll go ahead and grab that, I guess. It's the best reward we can find right now. Nothing else? Oh, that's awkward. All right, we do have this top cargo area for other stuff, but... Um, setting a lot of our heavy cargo up there just makes the ship top heavy. And we want to, you want to avoid that. This game really does keep track of ballast. So you need to take, take that into consideration. Okay. What's the wind doing? Oh God, we're in irons. We're not quite in irons, but yeah. Ugh. Uh, one of the weaknesses of this ship is it doesn't have like none of these guy lines has a flag on it to help determine where the wind is. So we have to do it from third person to see way up here. So the wind is basically blowing directly in our face, which means we're backing up. And that's actually not bad. <clears throat> we can we can use that to our advantage. So if I roll out roll this out, what I need to do is turn this way. To back out and away from the dock. and hopefully not run aground. This is actually kind of why this start is so hard because with the wind in your face, like, you know, a lot of people might not know how to handle that. So now, we're no longer directly in the wind. I'm just going to go ahead and keep on backing out. Why not? Now, if I want to get going forward, here is what I need to do. <clears throat> we pull this all the way up. The four jib here is what we'll use to actually get moving forward. Um, which one of these rolls that out? It's this one. This one? Yes. Boom. Now, the wind coming across is actually pulling on that a little bit. Giving, giving us some forward momentum. If I tighten up this this line, lock the wheel. So I'm just going to get this line nice and tight here. Okay. Forward motion. I'm going to tighten this all the way down.
Are we moving? So the wind, the wind, uh, the wind is actually blowing us around because the, so this is, this is one thing about this hard start. It's like, I'm only applying wind to the front of the ship, which means we're getting kind of blown around in a turn. We eventually want to head south, which is that way. So if we go out this way, we're okay. And it looks like that's the way to do it with the wind, the way the wind is anyway. So that's locked. Let's go ahead and roll out the main mist. And we'll start seeing ourselves move forward. Hopefully I don't run aground here. That would suck. Oh, this is going to be close. Okay, we're cool. Free and clear, a little bit of advanced sailing techniques there to get our ship pointed and going in the right direction, but we now have the wind blowing um, looks like a broad, broad running or broad reach running or something like that. So I'm going to go ahead and adjust these sail angles to maximize the amount of stuff that I have. Now the thing about this thing is that it has two two winches to work on. So we're going to go ahead and pull do that. Pull this tight. Get a nice 45 degree angle across that line. And I think we want to let this out. About like that. And it looks like we're finally on our on our way in the right direction. <clears throat> uh, we started off at Siren Song and Fort Astrin is due south. So let's get our compass out and just make sure we're pointing at the right spot. There we go. Sailing to, toward Fort Astrin. Now, since we've done that, our sail configuration is all messed up again. Let's go ahead and just pull this as tight as we can, I guess. And we'll pull this tight too. Oh, that's all the way out. Okay. <clears throat> so this, this sail is all the way as far port as it's going to go. But yeah. That looks like we're uh, getting good thrust. I'm also happy with that the ship isn't like turning too far to port or starboard. If that's an issue, what we actually do is this. Like if we find ourselves being pulled one way too much, right? If I pull this tighter, it'll have more pressure on the on the front of the ship and will tend to turn more port. Right? If I let it out, we have less pressure on the front of the ship, and we tend to turn a little bit more starboard. So we're, we use this here, the jib, to help us kind of keep our steering set up. This is actually a pretty good place to take sort of a sighting, right? <clears throat> so I just want to make sure I, I, I am where I think I am. I'm looking south. I see Fort Astrid, and I can see another big island this direction, and that's probably Sunspire. So that would be southwest. So if I draw this, you know, draw this imaginary southwest line. Draw an imaginary south line. And then the other place to look at, Siren Song behind me, that way. To the north, yep. Draw an imaginary line to the north. Where those lines all cross and intersect is more or less where I am. So I'm actually making good time to Fort Astrid. Coming up on a lovely sunset, though. So 
So I know when this is southwest, yeah, we're two thirds of the way there now. And that was just an afternoon worth of sailing, so. If I sail into the evening until it's too dark, go to bed or anchor up, go to bed, all that good stuff, then we'll arrive tomorrow. One sunset later. So as to not run aground and all that terrible stuff, what I will do is begin pulling all of our sail and getting ready to anchor. Anchor set. Let's go ahead and get our rest for the night. Uh, and dawn is just barely breaking on the horizon here pretty soon. Nice. So let's weigh anchor and get underway. We are close hauled AF. So, uh, I mean, we're moving, but not very fast. Sailing close hauled is not this ship's primary strength. I'm going to go ahead and just pull the crap out of these jib lines. Tighten up the sail as much as I possibly can. I'm pretty sure there's just one dev doing this right now. So he's doing everything art. So the art style for the ships are pretty nice, right? The locations and people, maybe they could use an art pass. It might be that this is the aesthetic he's going after. But, uh... Man, that dawn. The sun, the reflection on the waves. The sort of, right now, sort of angelic early morning haze that we got going on right now. Well done. Well done, Dev. Well done. Not quite as gorgeous as Sea of Thieves. Sea of Thieves is a beautiful game. But its, sail uh, but it's sailing simulation is obviously very gamified compared to this. As we saw at the beginning of the episode when I had to like, configure the sails to put the ship in reverse <laughs> to back out of dock so I could get turned around the right way. Um, yeah. I mean, it's kind of cool that you can do that kind of stuff. Okay, let's go ahead and turn and get some speed. Yeah, let's see if I can't figure out how to do this right. I think it's more like this. And to actually jib, I want to let this all the way out. Pull this all the way tight. <clears throat> We're going to be tacking through on the foremast only. So I got to be careful about how much wheel pressure that thing's pulling on us. That's all set. Let's try it. Tack, please. I'm going to let that out. This for sale will begin luffing and then we can turn it. Yep, so far so good. Still got momentum. The jib's luffing now. Which means the wind is basically falling off. Now what a... Perfect. Pull us through. Yes, we got it. 
Bingo. Get ourselves on course. Roll out the main mast. Boom. And then we're going to let out uh, a little bit here so that we don't have any counter steer happening. Like that. This place does have a, you know, fairly lovely atmosphere at night, I guess. Oh, you can see how much my weight has an impact on this ship when I'm up, up this high. All right. So. Yep. Yeah. Just go ahead and whip her around now. Something like this, I guess. Gonna smack into a dock. Okay. That was a bit of an adventure. Now, I was told by someone in comments that I think... Oh yeah, you can put it in your inventory. Nice. So as long as you have an inventory slot, you can sort of hang the uh, the lantern off your off your belt, so to speak. To give yourself a little personal light source. Uh, where's the other tie down line that I'm looking for? Is it up top? Yeah. Jump. <clears throat> okay, let's offload really quick. Where is the place? Um, right there. Oh, nice. We're really close. That barely paid for the supplies that I used. I need to buy more supplies and get more missions. But we'll worry about that in a future episode. Uh, as best as we can see it, let me go ahead and pull this lantern out and remount, maybe. This has been the maiden voyage of the COG. You can kind of see how difficult the ship is to operate um, in, until we get more proficiency in it. But we have access to Astrin and all that good stuff now. So I'm going to go ahead and sleep in the cot and sign off for the night. Until next time. I'm Simmer Game TV. <laughs> Who am I? What the heck? Until next time, I'm Sim Gamer TV, and this has been Let's Play Sailwind Maiden Voyage of the Cog.